Now let's go to the concept called as Hydrogen's Principle. When we drop a small stone on a calm pool of water, waves used to spread out from the point of impact. So you can consider and see this one as a wave in a pool. So if you see here, once after a small stone is thrown over here in this point, you can find here how the waves are spread out. So every point on the surface starts oscillating with the time. At any instant, a photograph of the surface would show such a circular rings on which the disturbance is said to be maximum. Hope you can understand this one. So this one is the concept of hygiene's principle in our real life. So you can see here the waves and this region is indicating the wavefront of water. Clearly, all points on such a circle are oscillating in phase because of the reason is that they are at the same distance from the source. So, such a locus of points which oscillate in phase are called as wavefront. So, this region is indicating the locus of all the particles. Thus, a wavefront is defined as the surface of constant phase. And also, the speed with which the wavefront moves outwards from the source is called the speed of the wave. So you can see here how the wavefront having its speed. And you can also find the energy of the wave travels in a direction perpendicular to the wavefront. If we have a point source emitting waves uniformly in all directions, then the locus of the points which have the same amplitude and vibrate in the same phase are called spheres. And we have what is known as spherical wave which is depicted over here. So this one is a spherical wavefront and this one is indicating the cylindrical wavefront. At a larger distance from the source, a small portion of the sphere can be considered as a plane and which is known as plane wave. So this is the plane wave. You can see it here. Now, if we know the shape of the wavefront, that is with the time t equal to zero, then Hyge's principle allows us to determine the shape of the wavefront at a later time indicating tau. That is called as tau q. Thus, Huygens principle is essentially a geometrical construction which given the shape of the wavefront at any time, it allows us to determine the shape of the wavefront at a later time. Thus, Huygens principle is essentially a geometrical construction so you can find here which has been given the shape of the wavefront at any time allowing us to determine the shape of the wavefront at later time. So this is how it will be. So here you have an indication. This O is indicating the center and this one is indicating tuck. And this one, if you see here, you can find here, these things are happening in time which is indicated as T. And this F1 and F2 is indicating the diverging wave and this D1. And D2 is indicating the backward wavefront. And this G1 and this G2 is indicating the new wavefront. And this one, V is indicating the speed of light in medium. If you see here, F1, F2 represents the spherical wavefront with O as center at time t equal to 0. So the envelope of the secondary wavelets emanating from F1 and F2 produces the forwarding move wavefront at G1, G2. So the backward wave that is D1, D2 does not exist over here. Let's consider a diverging wave and let us represent it as F1, 
and F2 which is a portion of the spherical wavefront at time t equal to 0 which you can able to see it here. So in terms of Huygens principle you can find here how the spherical wavefront is. Now, according to Huygens principle, each point of the wavefront is considered to be the source of a secondary disturbance and the wavelets that is emanating from these points spread out in all directions with the speed of wave. You can find it here very clearly. So these wavelets emanating from the wavefront are usually referred as secondary wavelets. And if we draw a common tangent to all these spheres, we obtain a new position of the wavefront at a later time. Thus, if we wish to determine the shape of the wavefront at t equal to torque, we draw spheres of radius indicating v tau q or tau we can say from each point on the spherical wavefront where v represents the speed of the waves in the medium. If we now draw a common tangent to all these spheres, we obtain the new position of wavefront as indicated as t equal to tau, that is tau q. So the new wavefront shown as g1 and g2 in this representation is again spherical with point O as the center. So this one is the Huygens principle and this one is indicating the spherical radius. So the model has one shortcoming. That's nothing but we also have a back wave which is shown as D1 and D2. This one. So Huygens argument over here is that he argued that the amplitude of secondary wavelength is maximum in the forward direction and also zero in the backward direction. This is how by making this ad hoc assumption, Huygens could explain the absence of back wave. So however, this ad hoc assumption is not satisfactory and the absence of back wave is really justified from more rigorous wave theory. So Huygens geometrical construction for a plane wave propagating to the right is over here which you can able to see it here. So the F1 and F2 in the plane wavefront at time t equal to 0 and G1, G2 is the wavefront at the later time talk. The lines A1, A2, B1, B2 and it goes on are said to be normal to both F1 and F2 and G1, G2 and it has a representation of the rays. In a similar manner we can use Huygens principle in order to determine the shape of the wavefront for a plane wave propagating through a medium as shown here.